here we have the first sort of major test, I guess, of the uh, composite for the bonnet. So what I've done here is um, vacuum bag what we propose uh, for the bonnet uh, composite material, and then we'll uh, check out the strength and uh, what it does when we when it fails. So we'll actually uh, test it out and then actually break it and see what happens. So the, uh, the downside, the underside, the side nearest the table is actually the top surface of the bonnet. So what we have here is, uh, from the bottom, um, we have two layers of the 200 gram twill for visual effect. Then we have a layer of the 400 gram dual ply and a layer of Kevlar on top of that. We have a layer of 600 gram um, 201 and then the core material. And almost in reverse, we've got then the 200 gram, sorry, the 600 gram 2 over 1, followed by the 400 gram dual ply, followed by uh, the Kevlar. So the Kevlar is going to be the, uh, the layer visible underneath the bonnet. And right there, we've got 200 grams, 200 grams, 400 grams, 600. 600, 400, there's a lot of um, layers of um, carbon fiber and uh, Kevlar there, the Kevlar is 170 grams. So I haven't added it up in my head, but it's going to be quite thick, quite um, heavy relatively. But I'm going to guesstimate the bonnet will come out with resin, the bonnet will come out to be uh, a bit shy of 7 kilograms for an immensely strong bonnet. Seven kilograms. I reckon that's pretty amazing. So what we're doing here, while I'm taking the video, I'm just testing the vacuum, make sure there is a seal there, and it appears there is a very, very slight leak. So I'll just go around and um, recheck all the tape, and then reapply vacuum to see how we go. So here we have the vacuum infusion. That's the resin pot with the uh, feed line going in. The spiral tube there to help the distribution. That's a vacuum bag material in the layers. And you can see there the uh, bleeding edge of the resin as it's infusing through the uh, layers, through the pockets of layers. And that's the uh, vacuum line. That's the catch pot which catches any excess resin. And that's the vacuum pump itself. So it's a pretty simple process really. It's quite hard to get right. So as that advances through, I'm hoping Hopefully that will be perfect. That advancement is going through underneath the core material as well and through all of the layers above and below with no dry spots whatsoever. So I'm not entirely sure how I'm sure that process happens, but uh, time will tell I guess. It should work. should be no reason why it won't work. So there we go. Resin. Feed line. The clamps to close it off, the vacuum bagging, the darker patches where the resin is infused through. You can see there, it's just about through. Vacuum line, catch pot, and vacuum pump. All pretty logical. Let's see if I can get it right. So here is the end result, it hasn't been trimmed yet but I have cracked it out of the mould. That's the same way it was in the uh, vacuum infusion process. So the Kevlar is the top layer that you can see there, uh, which will be the underside of the bonnet. If we flip this over, you can see the major floor in the middle there. That's a, uh, a patch where the uh, resin has not infused the carbon fibre. But um, the rest of it has come out really, really well. Extremely happy with that. Uh, you can see just here a bit of an imprint. If I pan back, you can see the imprint of the um, core material around the edge there. There are ways to minimise that, absolutely, which we'll get onto. Um, but it, it doesn't matter too much anyway. Um, but we will. So 
certainly minimise that using uh, unidirectional tape off the edge of the um, core material there. And we can also taper the edge of the core material. We can fix the risk of these things by uh, having a better vacuum. And I do have a dual stage vacuum pump which I'll try uh, later on before we do the final product and that will pull a better vacuum and, and prevent this from happening. Um, at the same time we will actually um, perforate the core material just by putting holes in it at about 100 mm intervals. Um, technically those holes will fill with resin and will add a bit of weight but you know it doesn't matter too much the holes can be very very small it just has to allow um, airflow. So um, excellent as a test piece and I can't describe how strong this is um, but I'm going to actually put this, the edges of this between two chairs and stand on it and then jump up and down and I'm not so sure that I'll be able to actually break it because breaking it is what we're going to be doing we need to break it to see what kind of forces are required to break it and also to make sure that the Kevlar is holding it together so shards of carbon fibre don't uh, delaminate and um, fly through the air in, in the case of uh, a critical failure of the piece of the bonnet basically. So if we do have a bit of a stack or if the bonnet does fail somehow it doesn't damage or endanger any people um, around us and the Kevlar should hold it all together. Is supremely well. I've uh, just run a bit of a brief test with uh, bits at hand. I've just got a couple of the extension uh, leads of the power boards there, suspending this about 20 mil off the ground, about a little bit less than an inch off the ground. And uh, so that is the carbon fiber piece suspended off the ground. That is my foot with 95 kilograms on top of it. That's my other foot. And you can see there is maybe a few millimetres of flex there. If I bounce up and down, there's a little bit of flex, but nothing. So that piece of carbon fibre there is uh, 450 mil long, or about 17, 18 inches long, um, 350 mil wide, and. Um, I'm going to struggle to break it. We do need to break it eventually to see what happens. I'm going to struggle mightily to break that piece. It's just carbon fibre and the proper use of it and construction of it continues to just blow me away with the, uh, the strength of it and the rigidity and also with the right usage uh, flexibility. It's just staggering stuff.